What is going on everybody? Welcome back to the Civilization 5 East Asia AI only battle. We're getting through the turns. We're going to hit 250 in a couple of turns. We'll have a look at the info addicts and other cool stuff then. But yeah, welcome welcome back. Things got pretty exciting towards the end of the last one, which is fantastic. We obviously saw the Khmer sadly dropping out, but we also saw Ming begin to collapse, particularly to Chiang Kai-shek's China. And did they... wait a minute, what the heck? Did they always have this... I'm lost. Maybe they always... Yeah, I think they always had that. I don't know why. I thought someone else had this city, but whatever. Um, yeah, they've, they've connected their borders to their coastal city. They've obviously just grabbed Ming's former capital as well. So it's not looking good for Ming. I mean, they're still not... They're not a disaster yet. They're probably still not even the worst Civ in the world. I, I, I don't know who's worse. I mean, Siam and Burma aren't great, but they're not... They're okay. They're not. They're not rubbish. I don't know, they do still have 230 pop cities, so I'm not going to count them out. And a 20 here, 18, still there, even though it was obviously like 35. So I'm not going to rule them out, but that sucks. But yeah, they started to have a bit of a crumble. The Jar is struggling as well, although they still have a very good capital if they can stay alive. Mongolia probably is struggling to get anything else off Ming, but they are going to hold on to these cities finally. Um, and what else do we see? Oh, Korea be beginning to slowly make progress against Japan, other than just nuking them repeatedly. So there we go. But before we get into the rest of the video, guys, if you are already a subscriber, a fan, whatever, or if you're not, I mean, if you're not, then, and you're here already, I mean, I'm not going to try and ask you to subscribe already, but uh, if you want to, you can, um, although I'd wait and see if you enjoy the video first. But if you're already subscribed, I'd appreciate if you could turn on notifications, and there we go, we'll get we'll get right into it, we get straight past that bit, and we'll move on. Right, but it would be, co it is, it will help the channel, you know, you, you, I don't know what, what might get better, but things might get better if you do it. I don't know what, something. <laughs> Just press the button. <laughs> uh, right, there we go. Um, but yeah, there's plenty going on. I've, I'm very nervous about a war between either of these three, like against what, two of them, whichever two it is going against each other. Because there's a lot of units, and that can sometimes break the game. So I don't know what will happen, but we'll see. But here we go, we got a couple of capital recoveries that did last not... Okay, Nanjing went back to Ming. Um, briefly, the Jar took theirs back and then lost it again to the People's Republic of China. And Mongolia just completed a spaceship booster, as did New Siam. So there we go. The space race is actually well. It's actually quite interesting. Obviously, we don't pay much attention to it. It's, I left it on by mistake, I assume. It, was, it wasn't supposed to be on. This was planned to be domination only. But we got like halfway through and I saw it was on. Um, well, I might have noticed it at the start, actually. I can't remember. But either way, it's not like a disaster. The game's actually very interesting. Um, but as you see, Korea and China, it's essentially neck and neck. They need different parts, but there you go. They are both going for different parts. Mongolia is a bit further behind, but they have really good production, so it just depends if their technology will allow them to get all of these in time. But yeah, there's definitely at least a space race between these three, which is pretty cool. I don't know if the diplomatic victory is on this time. No, it's, it, well, it is on, but as in, like, no one's close. Like, Morocco somehow snuck one in my last world game, even though they were probably the worst Civ alive at the point that they won the game through, through that victory, which was quite funny. Here we go. Here's Chiang Kai-shek's turn. He is not able to conquer Nanjing, and that might be to do with the ridiculously high city defense. 170 is not easy. You're going to probably need a fully full health unit, and you're going to need to remove that last bit of defense before before you can take that over. Obviously, it is bad that the cities go a few times and they get really low in population. That doesn't help. You know, obviously this city was at like 35. This region was 35, 35 not too long ago. Like, you know, maybe 15 minutes ago in terms of just pure time of the videos. And now it's... I mean, this area, this city got nuked down to like 7 and it's already back at 20. So it is recoverable. They grow back really quickly. I think that's to do with maybe a mix of the mods. We're on quick speed. It's deity difficulty. All those things coming in together. Yeah, we do see very quick. There's plenty of tiles ready and available around the cities as well to give food. So yeah, they can grow pretty quickly. Yeah, they've all got large areas of borders too because of the faster border expansion mod. So, you know, every city's probably got a few more tiles than it normally would have too. But there we go. Nanjing once again falls to Chiang Kai-shek's China with a vast amount of land. Obviously, Ming still stays really high on land because the sea tiles are included when we looked at the... We had a brief little glance at the info addicts, but there we go, we've made it to 250, assuming Mongolia don't do something crazy here, we can uh, have a look, but we'll keep an eye on it, is the rest of Japan is okay for now, it seems, seems all good, I forgot the Jar had this, still got it, Korea's population just continuing to go up, 42 and 42, this one's now up to 33, 
ridiculous numbers. But here we go. We'll have a little look at the Info Addicts World Fact Book. Here we go. There's probably now enough sieves we can actually see. Yeah, we can see everyone who's alive just on one page. So that makes it a lot easier to read. So here we go. Population. Korea leading the way with double pretty much anyone else's population. Just under double Mongolia. But only like by 50,000 or something. Not much. But South Korea there. Or regular Korea. 115 million people. Then it's a big drop to Mongolia, who are much bigger, with 58 million people. So everyone probably has much bigger, nicer houses and lawns in Mongolia, just because there's more space. That's how I'm imagining it. Lots more space for people, whereas Korea is much more rammed in. Particularly the actual, you know, modern day, like, Korea. That area is mega packed. There is 82 city population within those regions, which is probably, probably about 45 to 50 no, yeah, probably over 50%. Oh, no, it's slightly under 50%, I believe, of what Korea might have in total. Or it's around 50 Oh, no, Incheon's another city. It is about 40% of what Korea has. But what does it matter? Let's stop making guesses. 58 million for Mongolia. There's another big drop-off to 46 million for New Siam down in Southeast Asia. And then 42 million in Burma. So there you go. A lot of people also in Southeast Asia. Another very densely populated area on this map. Ming still sits in fifth, despite all the new kings and losses of cities. I think they would have been probably in se I think they were in second prior to the wars and the new kings. But they're on 41 million. People's Republic of China then sits in sixth with 36 million people. 24 million for the Shan states over in the sort of southwestern corner. Uh, Chiang Kai-shek's China, who is becoming quite big now land-wise, only with 21 million. Of course, they have lots of average-sized cities, no big ones. And the ones with, like, 40 population, they really drive the numbers up. Um, I think, like, yeah, the growth... So growing a city from 1 to 2 has a much smaller effect on this number we're seeing than growing from, like, 30 to 31. Like, that's a lot bigger jump, even though it's only 1 again. Um, it is, like, scaled. Uh, and then we have the Jar, 19 million. Obviously, they're going through a rough time. The Champ are only 19 million. Bit of a surprise for, for them. They're doing quite well. I imagine they have a very high military to population ratio. Uh, Siam with 17 million. And then in sort of last is Japan at the moment, the 12th place, with 5.7 million. Obviously, they've been going through a rough time. A lot of nukes flying their way. <laughs> you can see the almost disparity, right, between Korea and Japan. Massive differences. Crop yield, Mongolia, well out in front. Then it is Korea, Chiang Kai-shek's China's climbed up to third. Siam in, in fourth, and the Shan in fifth. I'll probably just go, th I won't go through all 12 for all of them, or we'll be here forever, but I'll go through the top five. Maybe we'll look at some of the other, the, the big important ones are the interesting ones that I think are interesting at the time. We'll do all 12. Production, Mongolia does lead the way. They have the highest production, most food, second biggest population, but maybe that will continue to increase and grow. Who knows? A lot of tundra, though, so it will be difficult. Chiang Kai-shek's China up to third as they continue to grow. The Shan states in fourth, despite their relatively small population. And the Champa sit in fifth. Korea not quite in the top five there. Uh, biggest economies, Mongolia has overtaken Korea, but it seems like that's pretty neck and neck, probably based on who has what cities at what time. Korea, I don't know if Japan's maybe plundering some of their trade. You know, it all, de it all depends on that sort of thing. But there you go, they are by far the two biggest the Shan states sit in third, which is a bit of a surprise. They don't have any coastal cities, really, to send cargo ships. They have one, but that's tucked away very far in the corner, so you think that'd be quite difficult. Uh, Chiang Kai-shek's China then sits fourth. People's Republic of China in fifth. Okay, there we go. We'll, we'll, we'll only do the top fives. Land, here we go. Who's the biggest? Mongolia is currently the biggest. Then Korea, still in second. I said Korea was relatively small, but... Obviously not that small. I mean, they're only 500,000 square kilometers off. Chiang Kai-shek's China now sits comfortably in third at 2 million. Burma just ahead of People's Republic of China, which is very surprising. Burma has a lot of sea tiles, though, particularly from the Philippines. Um, and Ming is, all, is still in sixth, despite, you know, their collapse, impending collapse. Japan is still in seventh as well. Not looking so good. The Jar is currently in last place. Obviously no sea tiles for them. Definitely a disadvantage in this category. Military manpower, Mongolia then, 1 million, 1.1 million soldiers, so that's like 1 in every 58 Mongolians is in the military. The Champa, 800k, so that's much, much nearer to like 1 in 19 for them. But the Shan states sit in second, just below a million at 990,000. Champa, 850,000, Burma, 650,000, so that's three Southeast Na East Asian nations. Of course, they haven't been in many wars recently, so maybe that's why they haven't, you know, civs that are fighting probably do have less because they're all dead. 
Chiang Kai-shek's China currently in fifth, so um, and obviously they're waging a pretty big war. Korea's down in seventh, so keep an eye on that. Mongolia with double the strength, that could be a concern. Between now and we're going to do the results at 300, I've decided. We might just not count technologies out of fairness, because yeah, Burma's already there somehow, but we'll come back to that. Uh, approval and literacy will ignore. Social policies, Mao's China, 34 or People's Republic of China, New Siam then at 32, the Shah at 31, Mongolia 30, Siam at 28. Happiness, anyone negative right now? No, they're all they're all scraping by on positive happinesses. There's 13, oh that's because we're here, America, just squeezing themselves in. Technologies, we'll go from the bottom, so the Shah and Ming are now last on tech at 70. I don't think it makes as much of a difference anymore, you know, in terms of the, the domination of the world kind of play obviously the only science victory is now the main key difference between technologies and obviously like giant death robots no one's got um some civs may have nuclear missiles i haven't seen one yet but you know that sort of stuff could be the difference mongolia is still pretty low though with 72 chiang kai-shek's china at 74 the champa japan and the shan states all at 75 so old siam and people's republic of china with 76 korea who i thought was doing the best are not 77 for them new siam at 78 and burma is the first civ to complete the tech tree that might be to do with their religion actually no not their religion do they have religion no i don't think so the Khmer had one but they have a lot of jungle so i don't know if that or some jungle they don't have that many land tiles but maybe some jungle helping them i, I don't know the, the the few cities helps as well having less cities is important here's net gold so this is gold per turn this is the stat that we're all familiar with. I'm not using it anymore. We are using GMP now, just because most civs end up with negative. Although at the moment they're managing it, only the Shan states, Jar and Siam are on negative money. Which kind of makes sense, not from a game sense. I don't know how they're losing money, just two bigger militaries. But Siam and the Shan states are tucked away in a corner. The Shan states is almost practically, you know, landlocked. And their one coastal city is cut off, so you can kind of theorise how they don't have money. But obviously that's not how it works in the game. And then the Jar, I mean, yeah, they're in a war. They're struggling in the middle of everything. They only have caravans anyway, which doesn't help. So they can't have any cargo ships. That probably hurts them too. And then you've got some of the other ones. Japan still have a positive economy, despite every city being nuked multiple times, probably. Uh, Korea with a massive amount of gold per turn still coming in as well. Leading the way. Cities, Mongolia currently in the lead, 14, Chiang Kai-shek's China with 10, 9 for Korea, 8 for People's Republic of China and the Shan states, 6 for Ming, Japan and the Champa, Burma and both Siams with 5 and the Jar with 4. Science output, here we go, Korea does still lead the way despite not being the tech leader, so there you go, number of cities playing a big role. Mongolia is up to second, so they might start to catch up. People's Republic of China in third, Burma in fourth, and Chiang Kai-shek's China in fifth. As I said, you can pause if you want to have a deeper look. Um, all, all the 12 sieves now should be on the screen, so that works out. If it's not, it should be me that's above them, and then they'll you see the top of their name here. In process of elimination, you can figure out who they are. Here we go. Culture. China is leading the way. Matt, that is People's Republic of China. Then it's Mongolia, New Siam, Korea, and Chiang Kai-shek's China. Wonders, we saw this pretty recently, although I think New Siam have shot up to eight. How the heck did they do that? Oh, they conquered the Khmer's capital, which probably had a couple in it. Um, but there you go. Ma Mao's China with 13 still. New Siam, Korea with six. Chiang Kai-shek's China with four. Three for Burma and Siam. Yeah, you can see Ming probably lost theirs to um, Chiang Kai-shek there. Treasury we don't look at. Faith game we don't look at. I don't think... Oh, some civs are getting influential. Fair enough. Uh, not all, not enough of them. Only four of them have influenced anyone. And I think the Khmer's death probably hurt a lot of civs there because they were probably quite a few civs influential over them. Great works. Mongolia leads the way. Obviously, they're probably stealing a lot too, attacking everyone. New Siam, People's Republic of China, Burma, and Chiang Kai-shek's China in fifth. Trade routes, a couple of nines. That's again probably wonder based for New Siam and People's Republic of China. And then tourism. New Siam is currently the, the number one holiday destination, followed by the People's Republic of China, which is a bit weird in the game sense. Not in the Sorry, in the game sense, that's fine, because they have loads of wonders. Actually, yeah, they have loads of wonders, but they are obviously, they're not even like near the coast. No beaches or anything there, so a bit weird in that sense. But yeah, they have all the wonders, so that does make sense. Korea then sits in third, the Shan and Burma as the top sort of five tourist destinations. We'll have a quick look at the religions. It was pretty neck and neck previously. 
And is it currently still that way? This The sort button does not work. It's very annoying. Why is the three at the top of the bot? Wait, was it sorted then? No. Why is it in reverse order? <laughs> Either way, Liao's religion, Islam, is currently the strongest religion. They're not even around anymore as a sieve, but there you go. 17 cities. Catholicism from Khmer is in 16. Uh, Confucianism from Korea is in 15. And Buddhism from the Shan State is not spreading as much in 13. Yeah, the Khmer and Liao, the two best religions, they're both dead. <laughs> so that's a bit of a surprise. Obviously, China's religion's not really gone anywhere. Although it has survived somewhere, although not in Beijing. I don't know, it's in this city. I don't know where the other two are. But two other cities somewhere, maybe in Japan or something. I don't know if it's spread across the water. Oh, I don't know where it is. Could be, it. apparently there's two other cities following that religion. I have no idea where. Oh, this one. Don't know how these two got converted by China, but there we go. They did it. It happened. Stasis chamber for Burma. This normally I'd never like even look at this, but this is kind of interesting just because there's a few civs actively going for it. You know, normally in a lot of my games the winner's already wrapped up. Here I don't really know, right? You probably could work it out if you just paused and went through it all. But that would seem pretty pretty even, right? I'm guessing Mongolia and Korea probably overall had edges. But you know, there were some other civs winning some categories. I do think Mongolia probably is in the lead. And Korea on some other I think Korea's doing really good. I think Mongolia was winning some and then sort of always around the top five. I think uh, Korea was maybe sometimes not on the list, so that might hurt them. The city's now down to one, but the Jar have retained it. Chiang Kai-shek has built his spaceship cockpit. And I think something else, I don't know if this radiation is always here, or it might be because I've reloaded the game. It's just, yeah, that's what it is probably. It's because I've reloaded the game. These cities were nuked earlier on. Oh, Mongolia change of path and that nearly crashed the game i could literally feel it like freeze for a second uh, mongolia with a massive change of paths and yeah this is it for the jar really smart move from mongolia the route into ming has mostly been cut off and now they are very close to taking two cities potentially this turn considering how much damage they did in the last turn so yeah this is this is it for the jar i imagine the people's republic of china and mongolia will be dividing them up and chiang kai-shek is then gonna get a free run at what remains of Ming. Although this city is going to be a bit of a battle. Ming has still got plenty of units. And ah, Korea won the game. I needed to... Okay, that's fine. Well, that's the end of the space victory hype. I, I thought the game was over then, normally. It's because sometimes if I set the game up wrong at the start. When I delete my unit, it comes up with that screen. But obviously I can't do the one more turn thing. So I was very nervous there. But there we go. Korea does win the space victory. It wasn't as hyped up as I thought it would be. I didn't realise they only had one piece left now. But there we go. The Shah losing their capital again. The city of Erlitu going into the People's Republic hands. I see the pyramids there. And Mongolia didn't quite get through, but they've nearly got... They're going to get Taipei up here, definitely. Which makes sense with the borders. And, I mean, the, this new capital, it wasn't the original one, but this one with 30 is going to go... Ooh! Embargo of Mongolia. That will be interesting, because that really hurt their economy. It, was, it wasn't a negative one, but it probably... It wasn't, like, a great one like Korea's... And we'll see what happens here with the non-proliferation as well. That could be really interesting if that gets voted through. Um, plenty of civs do have nukes, but obviously some would not be able to build any. I mean, I know Mongolia has used quite a few of theirs, although they've rebuilt some and some nuclear missiles. Yeah, they're very well armed. Korea, though, has used pretty much all of theirs and hasn't replaced them. I, they have no planes right now. I don't know how they've done that. I, I assume that's by choice. It's a bit weird. Um, also, this city is back up to 16 again. It was at 9, literally last episode, which is only like 5 turns ago. How, how have you gone up 7 population in like 5 turns? That's ridiculous. Capital restored by the Jar. They they retake their capital. Good job. Should see Mongolia do this here. Yes, the battle for Shantian has begun between the Ch uh, China and Ming. And this should be pretty interesting. I think eventually these guys do have, you know, they're, they're wrapping around. They have more numbers. The city is very exposed, although the lake will help. And there is a lot of cities falling there. Oh, my goodness. Yes. Okay, so this one fell back to Mao's China. Um, Taipei fell to Mongolia, as did Irene here. So big wins for Mongolia. And that leaves one little city here for the Jar, who will probably disappear pretty quickly. Between, you know, it's a race. Who can get there first, I guess. It would be kind of nice if the People's Republic did get it. Just as a little boost. Because this city is pretty ruined now. But more importantly, Mongolia was embargoed. So they are going to struggle to finance the world's biggest military now. It's going to be a lot harder. There's no city-states to trade with in this. 
So they are going to be dependent essentially on financing them. So, oh, look at this Citadel spam. That is that is cruel. And they stole away a manufactory. That is nice, to be fair. Oh, but they, okay, fair enough. I mean, what were you expecting? They did it too. Um, they have a manufactory here, but yeah, they Citadel up here. What did you expect? Um, but yeah, there we go. That leaves them in not so good a spot. And I did see nuclear non-proliferation did get voted through, so Korea can no longer build nukes. That is a crucial... That is a that is crucial. There's 47 turns left. I mean, that gives Mongolia, who has loads of them, a massive advantage. And any other Civ who has some just laying around. I don't know who exactly has them right now. I know the PR China had one atomic bomb there. But that's that might be it. I, I don't know if anyone else has any. The Champa have a couple. Uh, the Shan States do have one. They also have guided missiles. That's a weird choice, but okay. The Shan States have an atomic bomb. I, I don't know if anyone else has any stealth bomber there for New Siam, but no no atomic bombs. So there you go, not many. And I don't know if Japan built any as like a revenge plan. No, they have a couple of zeros. But Korea is now landing a naval invasion. So this could be pretty big. And I don't know if they dropped even more nukes there, but in the, they can probably build them in like one turn. I imagine these cities have some monstrous production. So, you know, Korea having that smaller military might not be a big an issue. They might be able to just double it in like a few turns. It's at the end of the day, they have the most money too. Maybe they can tr tr turn that around pretty quickly. But yeah, now they've got this city. They are going after Osaka and Kyoto. Yeah, that, that's not good for my pick of Japan, I'm afraid. Oh, Siam has one too. Okay, it's very far away from home, but they do have one over here. I, I mean, I'm not going to keep track of all the remaining ones. If you guys want to try and do that, we can, but it's a bit of a mess. Ooh, unique improvement. There we go, the Mong improvement. Okay, it looks like, I don't know what it does, but it's on a hill. It's giving production for golden culture. There you go. Oh, they have a couple over here too. Actually, they have loads in here. I mean, that's good. great for this city. Oh, and they have Mount Kailash here as well, which is giving them some faith, some happiness. That is nice. Didn't really look at the natural wonders on this map. There isn't... I don't think there is that. This might be the only one, to be honest. <laughs> Mount Kailash here. There's not Mount Everest on this game. Kilimanjaro is obviously in, Afri in Africa, like nowhere near here, but that's another mountain. But yeah, I don't think there's any other natural wonders, is there? A bit weird. I don't know if there is some... Is there just none from Asia in Civ 5? I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. There's a lot more in Civ 6, to be fair. Um, I think that's that's why. Right. Like, from everywhere. So, Because I think in Civ 5, there's like there's enough for one game, but this, it's the same ones every time. Whereas in Civ 6, there's like, there's like, you know, you could get different ones each game for quite a while. In theory, I think. I might be wrong with that. That's what it feels like, anyway. This has become the new capital of the Ming government. I'm not sure exactly why this city was preferred, but it's a very densely populated island in the Pacific Ocean. A couple of atolls around it. Very well defended by the navy. But yeah, obviously, I mean, Shantian would have been the obvious choice in normal times, but this city is heavily... I mean, I guess that this is these, these islands aren't irradiated, and these ones are still technically, like, war zones... You know, they still border the war. So I guess, yeah, for safety, this might be the best city to go into. As opposed to these ones where land invasions are much more possible. Here, you know, I mean, if you're fighting in the city, then it's too late anyway. <laughs> but you can see Siam has arrived here with XCOM squads to try and take this island. 32 pop, this would be a huge addition. And Mongolia eliminating the Jar. That's a bit of a shame. But Mongolia continuing to flex their muscles. It's beginning to look very good for them, I think. Up until now, I wouldn't have necessarily put them as the winner, just because I don't think they're dominating every category enough. But they're starting to look like they're in the lead. Here we go. Influential. Not so important, but there we go. I'm waiting for something down here. This this region has been very quiet. I think they're all, like, they're all too good, right? So we need someone from up here, particularly maybe this China in the future, who is all... Already settled two new cities in their new territory. Didn't waste no time to divide this area up. I mean, if it's going to take Nanjing a long time to grow back, that makes sense, right? Just divide the food, get some more production. Could be a really good move. Make the most of this massive amount of land. We do have some peace deals. The Shan and Ming, that was never really important anyway. Siam and the Jar. I mean, the Jar is dead. They must have some units wandering around that I'll have to eliminate at some point. I don't, I don't even see them, but somewhere. 
They have something somewhere. And there we go. Uh, oh, People's Republic of China. Yeah, again, piecing out with the Jar, who, I, like I said, I think I don't even see any units left from the Jar. I'm sure there's one lurking around. I'll trust the game. There's probably one hiding somewhere. But uh, more importantly, Korea did grab Osaka there. I did see it. I didn't ignore it. Oh, there's another wonder. Mount Fuji. That's a national, natural wonder. I'm sure you've all commented telling me Mount Fuji's there already. I'm sorry. We found it. Go, go and... Uh, go and uh, I heard this on a podcast the other day where someone made a similar mistake and they were like, just go and untype your comments. I know they're already there. So yeah, go and type those comments. I found it. Okay, by myself. Leave me alone. I'm sure there's some other ones, so I'm not going to say that because... <laughs> Sure, I've missed some other ones. Although, I don't know where they would be. I know, I'm just trying to think. Krakatoa is too far away to be on this map. There's one in Civ 6 that's like here, the Harlong Bay, but that's also not in Civ 5. So, I don't think there's any more. But there we go. Korea gets Osaka. Now, Siege of Kyoto didn't go as well. But, you know, this might lead to a bit more success now. They have some of Japan. They can attack on land. They can discover the horrors that they have left behind by just absolutely... Setting this area radioactively ablaze. Here we go. Some new wars against the Jar. Yeah, they must have something alive. Some I don't even know how. Oh, they are still alive. Sorry, I'm stupid. They I, they are not eliminated. They're they're here, but by Korea. That's that's where they're still around. There you go. Another thing where you've probably already commented and laughed at me, and I found it. <laughs> there we go. I completely forgot about this. I was like that threw me because yeah, you can't declare war on someone who doesn't have a city. That's the whole premise of how I can sort of survive here essentially, um, without putting mountains around me. The Jard, give me a peace deal. Siam and Ming, peace out. I'm just trying to see if City swap hands normally. I don't, don't think there's anything going on. Yeah, Ming gets a few peace deals, but with civs they didn't even border, really. Does anyone like just breaking nuclear non-proliferation? That'd be quite funny. There should be like a penalty, right? I think that'd be a better way to do it. Like it just is, maybe it costs more uranium or you lose money. To have nukes, like you have to bribe somebody, I, I don't know how it would work. But just something like that could be a more interesting way of way of doing it. Um, not that it like matters too much, to, you know, to do it however. But there we go. What's going to happen next? I'm really waiting for something in the... Um, I keep wanting to say Southeast Asia, and I guess it, it is Southeast Asia, right? But obviously it's west on this map, so it's very weird. But down here in the south would be quite interesting, you know, between some of these. But like I said, I think it's going to take this China, probably just based on the borders, to attack someone when they get really... If they're going to get really big off all this new land that they get, all these new cities, they get really good, and then they come and maybe kill this Siam or team up with the Champa. And then, you know, once the Champa get weak, then these guys attack them. You know, it's going to take some sort of chain like that. I don't think it's going to be... I think they're all pretty strong. I think they're, they're also all pretty awkwardly positioned around each other. Maybe even dependent on each other. I wonder if they would protect each other. That'd be quite interesting. Maybe they would. Mongolia does peace out with the Jar. So yeah, the Koreans will be the only civ taken out the Jar. If they want to. And obviously they're pretty busy at the moment. They do have a giant death robot. We'll probably see more of those. Just on the basis that nuclear proliferation, non-proliferation went through. Because you've got nothing else to use the uranium for, right? You build the building the requires uranium i can't remember what it's called you know the the nuclear factory whatever it's called that gives you a lot of production i can't remember what, i'm sorry completely brain gone on what it's called but that building is it the fusion it's not a fusion reactor it is a fusion reactor i think there's a fusion reactor and then there's another one either way you know what i mean some of the buildings that require uranium for better production and then obviously giant death robots i think are the only other option that actually use uranium nuclear submarines although it's in the name don't use uranium they can just hold nukes. Although in reality, in real life, I think nuclear submarines are powered by nuclear energy, which is pretty cool. I don't know if that has a part in why they can go so deep, or that's just unrelated altogether, but that's pretty cool. Either way, what's going Oh, okay, so... Okay, China did grab this, and then lost... Wait, what? Okay, they must have already had it, and I completely missed it, but they got it again. Or they lost it, and then they got it back again. Bit of a mess. I'm not sure. It's hard to tell the timeline because these notifications on the right are coming through a bit delayed, and we didn't even get the like re restored capital. Maybe they didn't restore it. Maybe a different. Maybe I'm getting very lost. No, I'm. I'm pretty sure Ming got it back, and then they took it off them again. And that is a unique unit for Chiang Kai Shek's China, the Wampoa clique. Which there you go, unique unit. Always good. I mean probably still a bit out of date like we are at the end of the tech tree now but 
can't afford to upgrade everything. And they're looking really big now all of a sudden. So that's good. At least someone maybe will rival Mongolia. Assuming Mongolia doesn't kill them before they have a time to rebuild all the land and stuff out this way. They've added another new city in here. And this is like the third city called Zion. Or someone told me how to say it and I've forgotten so we won't do it now. But this one, is I think there's like two other cities that share this name. There is... Where are they? I think there is one up here with without the space. And there's one somewhere else with an apostrophe in it. I don't know where exactly, but somewhere. I think it was one of these islands, there we go, that Japan has. It's three cities, very similar names, not confusing at all. Also, this water is a lot more full of boats. Last time, there was one, this submarine, I think it was, or it was a Burma submarine. It might not exactly have been this one, but I'm guessing it was. Was out here sort of by itself, but now there's tons of nuclear subs and different boats. Just exploring the ocean, so it's a little bit less empty, which is a nice feeling. But that will be it for this episode. So as always, if you have enjoyed, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe as well if you are new to the channel. And as I said, if you are already subscribed, I would really appreciate it if you could turn on notifications. But thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.